Greetings, I'm Pastor Lachey at Grace for the Nations Church in the city of Grand Rapids, Michigan, but reaching the world wide. We wanna invite you to be a part of a special service that we're having on Father's Day here at Grace for the Nations Church. If you're anywhere in the vicinity, we want you to join us at one o'clock for our worship experience. But earlier that day at 10 o'clock, we have a special service that will be aired online. And just all day long, we're gonna be celebrating men and the valor of men of God. We've dedicated the entire month of June to looking at men of the word, both in the Bible as well as as men who live their lives accordingly. So we wanna invite you to come and be a part of that, whether you are a man or not. Listen, women, you're welcome to join us as well. But on Father's Day, all men of all ages are gonna be here. We're gonna dress in our black suits and we're gonna show up so that we can make a profound and a prolific statement of where we are as the men of God. God asked the question of Adam, Adam, where are you? So our men have curated a service. You'll have um, the opportunity to experience a men's choir that day. And we're just going to be doing some special things to acknowledge some men and to give some deference to the fact that there are male factors in the body of Christ that go oftentimes unheard. So we invite you to come out, be a part of our Men's Day celebration, our Father's Day celebration and salute. We are restoring our role in the kingdom as men of God. Join us here at Grace for the Nation Church. Gracious greetings and welcome back or welcome to Grace for the Nations Church Online. I'm Pastor Lachey and today I'm blessed to have with me um, a very, very special guest. Um, he's not a guest. In fact, he is uh, a pioneering member of the Grand Valley State University clan that came to Grace years ago, about 18 years ago. Yeah, almost 18. Ago. Yes, sir. Um, but it's uh, none other than Mr. Sam Jones. And we're talking this whole month about men in the Bible, men in the word. Uh, last month, we talked about women in the word and Lady Eva and those who she talked to and interviewed did a great job, set the, set the bar high for us. And so today our discussion, Sam, is going to be around um, a man in the Bible that you've, of your choosing that we can talk about and that we can um, create some connectivity in this dialogue that we're having with men everywhere, the men of grace and the men who are connected to grace in any way, um, so that they can be blessed, blessed by the life examples, the history, um, perhaps even the mistakes or errors of the humanity of these men sure. that, that we have come across. So we'll start with a word of prayer, and then, and then after that, we'll just get into the dialogue, and you can um, tell us a little bit about you and what you do and who you are, and, and then your man from the Bible. Sounds All right, good. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for another day of your grace and mercy. We thank you for the goodness that you've shown us as men of God. We bless you for this time that we've set aside to create the foundational work once again of the structure of the family. Bless men everywhere, Father, as they are watching this service, participating in what's going on here at Grace for the Nations Church and coming up on Father's Day. Father, just let us glorify you and let us be enriched as we walk this walk and experience this journey with you as your dear sons. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right. Sam Jones. Yes, sir. Yes, and I'm sir. really proud of you and I thank God for the um, accomplishments that you've made in your life, both naturally and spiritually. We had many talks. And, yes, we uh, have. And, <laughs> and we talked about being sons, you know, mm -hmm. um, fathers, you had a great father, mm -hmm. um, and you have great spiritual fathers, um, uh, w one of which has made some deposits in your life, um, and I'm just Definitely. grateful to God that you submitted yourself under my leadership that, during the time that you did, and now you're serving as a leader in ministry. Tell yes, us sir. a little bit about what you're doing now. Yeah, so again, Samuel, nice to meet you all who are joining <laughs> us at Grace. Um, I am more than excited that I get a chance to serve here and sit here with you um, in this space. I want to say thank you. Amen. Thank you for, for serving and sharing and impacting and imparting into me so much in my life before I was even married. Praise uh, God. I remember that. Uh, those are my college days, you <laughs> yes. know, in Grand Valley and, and coming with uh, so many others and then to get introduced to your son who I got a chance to um, live with a little yeah. bit of time. And you guys had a rap group too, right? Uh, we did. Uh, yeah. Judah Jude Pack. Pack. I remember. Yeah. Um, but it's been a Unsung. little bit of time since Unsung. that time. Right? <laughs> <laughs> a little bit of time. Um, since that time, I've become a therapist for the Wisdom Center Counseling Services. Uh, God has allowed me for the past five years to uh, do so much in impacting lives of individuals who are in a space of trying to get their mental health. 
mm -hmm. together, mm -hmm. working on their relationships, uh, working on um, how to become better men, fathers, and so on, which is our conversation sure, today. Sure. Um, and God has allowed me to impact those individuals for the past five or so years. Um, also working with homeless youth mm -hmm. has been a constant work of mine, whether it's serving or in a work capacity and just to see what God has done in that space of growth um, in both me, but also in the space of serving others. Um, it all comes back to the space of learning here mm -hmm. grace in Praise so many God. different ways. And so God's been good um, in that space. And then along the way, of course, I got married. Absolutely. Uh, wonderful wife. Her name is Tova Jade. Yeah, and, uh, shout out to Tova. Yeah, and uh, two children, uh, Dixon, who was my, my first boy, mm -hmm. um, but he's only one. Okay. And then my eldest, which is Olivia, and uh, she's uh, enjoying herself right now yes. with her grandmother. She's so. got your heart, I can tell. <laughs> and yes, she There's does. Something about those daughters. So, um, so this is a little bit about me. I've also served in a pastoral capacity um, in previous times. I'm in different uh, arenas, but uh, I've served in a, at a Bible church. Yes. Um, and also I've as served. As men's pastor. As men's pastor, yes, mm -hmm. correct. And also, and also served as a uh, care pastor as well. In different areas. Man, I'm just so yep. godly proud um, of, of Sam when you were in your undergraduate years doing well. I remember the job at Walmart. I remember yep. all that of those things. Listen, I didn't even go that far manager, back. Right? Yeah. You were doing your thing. <laughs> wow, God has been so good. You, you thought I forgot about that, right? Listen, stressed. I had the blessed opportunity to participate in your all's wedding and nuptials. I mean, it's just been, it's just been a journey and um, you're a good living example of what it means to embrace being a man of God and so, a man of the word. Appreciate Let's that. take our conversation to um, the word and talk about um, a man in the in the word that stands out to you and we'll center our dialogue around that and also integrate your profession what you do as a licensed counselor and therapist and then the example that you've been and what you've learned from this character so who do we have that you're going to be talking about yeah so uh, one of my characters that God has kind of been working on uh, helping me understand a little bit more about is a character by the name of Absalom. Okay. Um, Absalom, we've set the scene a little bit, was David's son, one right. of David's children. One uh, of many sons. <laughs> exactly. Yes. Um, known for his beautiful locks and long hair. And they said, I believe in 2 Samuel 13 and 14 chapter, talked about how beautiful he was in the land, you know, yeah. in terms of his stature and his um, the way he came across, of course, to the ladies and the women. Yeah. Um, but in this space, in 2 Samuel 13 and 14, it talks about this idea that um, he had to get some revenge hmm. for uh, one of his other brothers by the name of Amnon, uh, unfortunately having some uh, sexual issues right. um, and abuse with his sister, Tamar. Um, and of course, they uh, both Amnon and uh, Absalom go to David um, as a way of signing on to, hey, send Tamar to Amnon for this act. And mm -hmm. hey, uh, Absalom, I need to bring in my brother Amnon for a sheep shearing season and session. And uh, they both get their sign off from their father, which puts their father in a situation of um, all this great wisdom, all the great accolades that David right, did, right. Um, to then send off his kids to one be hurt and another one be killed. Yeah. And so the yeah. story um, that I began to kind of read was this idea that Absalom, through the space, also gets into a challenge where, of course, he doesn't want to go back home because of what he does and what he did to Amnon. And of but it course, was out of hurt, though. It was. And the, not that it it's was. justified, but just to make the story, the mm -hmm. plot a little bit thicker. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not sure if Absalom and Tamar had the same mom, but we know that um, Absalom and Ammon did not have the same mother, and so mm -hmm. oftentimes enmity. There's yeah, there's there's <laughs> uh, baby mama drama. Oh yeah, all throughout the scripture. Oh yeah, um, but it's like twelve or thirteen different sons. These there are princes and mm -hmm. apparent heirs to the throne of David and the house of David. But yet there's this conflict because one of them decides to mm -hmm. take advantage of sexually his mm -hmm. sister. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And in that space, um, as you get into Second Samuel fourteen, um, again here comes Absalom. He goes over to his grandparents, great-grandparents, nation, and stays in Geshur, the land of Geshur. And That's where Jesse them came from. <laughs> <laughs> like, we know these people, you know. Right. And, like, as he's in this land and he's in this space, you know, he's living in obscurity because, of course, he's afraid to come home. Um, you know, we can do all the things of suggesting what's happening in his space. And David's um, at odds with his son. Right. For two reasons. One reason is the idea that emotionally, how could I let someone take advantage of me 
in a space of like being hurt of me in my word, which means so much in the land of Israel and Judah at that time, me and my word being exposed and me putting myself at exposure as mm -hmm. a father. Mm -hmm. And then the other space is, um, here is Absalom, who's one of my sons, who's supposed to be the very best representation of me. Right. You're a father, yeah. you know? And as a father, and as myself as a father, you have your kids be the best representation yeah. of you. Yeah. And then that idea, here's someone who has not only abused your word, but also abused their privilege as a son. And so here's Absalom in another land, David's heart is distanced, Absalom's heart is distanced, it Absalom says, I, I really would like to go home. And Joab, who is a nephew of David, mm -hmm. who's also the commander of the army, yeah. ends up... That's one of his seven brothers' sons uh -huh. yeah. that didn't get the oil. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Put it in context. Exactly. He, he, he sees David in pain for, I believe the Bible says, almost two to three years. And he sees David in pain. And in this space, David wants to be with Absalom, but his heart is almost hardened to bring his son back. And also, you know, mother of Amnon and their people probably like, you ain't coming back here, we're right. gonna kill you. And these, and these clans ran deep. Mm -hmm. I mean, when you think about Joab being the nephew to David, but mm -hmm. there are six other brothers who had sons and tribes exactly. and clans as well. And access to the kingdom. And access to the kingdom. And, yeah. and some, in some instances, culturally, probably rightful heirship in the untimely demise of the king, mm -hmm. which means that David had to always be looking out to see who was for him and who was, and against, was against him. Yeah. And so long story short, um, Joab uses a woman, because um, David has a history with women, yeah. um, as a father, as a husband, and as a man. Yeah. And he uses this woman, um, who's called a wise woman, and she uses a, I don't know what you want to call it, just a story or an analogy to begin to paint this picture to David that at the end of the day, 2 Samuel 14 14, this is this idea that, hey, um, we know that people will die and will be cast off in a sense. And I'm putting it in Samuel's layman's terms. Mm -hmm. um, but Sam God, Jones, not the prophet. Because <laughs> <He's, laughs> exactly. we're in the book of Samuel. Exactly, right? <laughs> yes. Samuel Jones terms. Yeah. He says, uh, she says to him, but in, but in essence, here's this idea where God really restores people back mm -hmm. to a space where even in the father-son dynamic, God would want this restoration between you two. And here's an analogy to kind of say the point. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, as I think about that story at the end of the chapter, it says, you know, Absalom and David, David allows Absalom to come back, but he doesn't want to see his face. Right. Eventually. For very it, many reasons. For very many reasons. But eventually at the end of the chapter, David and Absalom are restored um, in a way it says David kisses Absalom, which is a sign of Jewish culture of restoration mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. and continuance of a relationship or maybe even a foundation of a covenant. Sure. And so in that space for me, as I think about this, so many different layers um, to unpack, but I think about the emotional nature of men when we deal with hurt, mm -hmm. when we deal with pain. Intimacy of, mm -hmm. of feelings, you know, mm -hmm. and being able to express them and then the lack thereof. Mm -hmm. Like and that distance, or I don't want to see your face, don't talk to me, or on site, the term on site. Uh, yeah, on site, right? Yeah, on and, how, site. And, and how that plays a role, Pastor yeah. Leger, like, how many fathers and sons do we know that are distance because of something happened, their word was, you know, challenged, or there's an issue, or, or an issue. outright reaction exactly. to someone else's action. Exactly. Because in some context, mm -hmm. Absalom may have felt justified in killing his brother based on what he did to his sister. Mm-hmm. I mean, you know, there's really no justifiable reason for death other than the, the law of eye for eye, tooth for tooth, mm -hmm. or let them be put to death because of this particular act. But I agree with you 100% that throughout history and throughout the, 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 from the creation of mankind till now, of humanity till now, we see where the first time we get in offense with our father, mm -hmm. God our father, mm -hmm. or our natural father, mm -hmm. the first reaction is to run and hide. Mm -hmm. The first reaction is to separate yourself. Mm -hmm. The first reaction is to draw away from sonship. Talk a little bit about that and how you see it in your profession yeah. and how you've even dealt with that. Yeah, yeah. from a professional standpoint, uh, let me tell you, I see a lot of uh, young men, teens, um, who are having a space where they, let me paint this first, the narrative of 
sons don't have access to their fathers is one that's quickly being changed and mm -hmm. being challenged um, generationally. Um, first off, I'll say that. So I don't want to paint that picture, but what I will say is I see a lot of young teenage men and the young adult men who are challenged with the narrative of my father being somewhat absent or me being absent in heart with my father. Oh, absolutely. And so in that space, a lot of them have this navigation where they're challenged with how do I think about someone who in my, in the essence of who I am and how they are, we have this challenge of navigating a relationship that seems somewhat gone, distant, missed. Yeah. And yeah. so in that space, a lot of times when I'm dealing with teenagers or young adult men, it's about, you know, what's your father wound? Mm. Um, and how do you navigate that space? There's actually a book that talks about that. And when you have a father wound, how do you begin to navigate the space of learning to grow in a place of forgiveness, in the space of how you conceptualize your relationship, knowing that sometimes they don't always have a, um, how I want to put it, a continuation of relationship with them, being that they might be have grown up in different households. Oh yeah, or yeah. even had other fathers, or mentors, men, yeah, coaches, mentors. yeah, good and bad, yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> in a lot of ways. And in that space, how do they begin to, I guess, again, use the C word, conceptualize someone that feels so distant? Yeah. Um, but also there's the narrative of fathers who, sons who grew up with their fathers that I, that I navigate and I deal with. And yet the challenge still remains. Of emotional know, detachment. Uh, exactly. <laughs> um, and sometimes emotional dysregulation. Oh, absolutely. Based off of that Well, you're throwing out professional terms. <laughs> <You're> <laughs> but, I get it. Um, but I get it. Yeah. But in that space... I say emotion to regulation and I also throw out emotional intelligence because the narrative about a lot of men is the space that we don't, we are emotionally unavailable. Exactly. Well, 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 we keep well, that tucked well, away, you know. And sometimes you hear the story of both fathers or mothers or people in the community telling the young man that, you know what, emotions are weak. Yeah. Uh, you shouldn't be. Don't cry. You know, all those yeah. types of things. Yeah. And yet, if we're being honest in that space, it's not that they're unavailable, it's that they may have not been uh, encouraged to be emotionally intelligent. Absolutely, you can't exercise mm -hmm. muscles you don't know you have. Mm -hmm. And so yeah. it's in those sessions, a lot of times about uh, being able to put words and language mm -hmm. into the spaces and helping people again, see word, conceptualize what this means for me to be able to express. Sure, I was sharing something feel. Sunday about yeah. this, this past Sunday that the detachment that we have with God our Father exactly. is oftentimes as a result of our detachments here in earth, our disappointments, mm -hmm. our low self-esteem, mm -hmm. our lack of efficacy. I'm doing some doctoral research right now on the impact of fatherlessness on black males mm -hmm. and, uh, and, that, and their perception of self and mm -hmm. their perception of success. Mm -hmm. And this is adults. I'm not just talking about the, you know, the poor adolescent boys who grow up without a father. Mm -hmm. They grow up to be men mm -hmm. who are poor grown men without a father. And when I say poor, I don't mean wealth and finances, but I mean emotionally um, poor or impoverished. Mm -hmm. Talk a little bit about the remedies to um, that detachment or that void between a father and a son. Um, we're coming up on Father's Day, and we're <laughs> going to be um, talking a little bit. About, in fact, you're invited um, Thank to you. come. Thank you. Um, we have a Father's Day service that we're doing um, where we've got 100 men in black. We're wearing, you know, the men in black is the theme type thing, but we're wearing black suits <laughs> to show up at church. And it, it is it's to make a statement. We're literally making a statement. So, um, yeah, if you're available, if you're available, come. But, but address the issue of um, reconciliation or the issue of how do we remedy, um, what, are, what are the therapeutic measures for getting back to the Father, both mm -hmm. naturally and spiritually? Mm -hmm. I think first off, it's a thing of identifying and acknowledging that there is sometimes those issues. Mm -hmm. um, kind of think about a barbershop experience. Yes. Um, you come, you begin to lay down all the things that are happening in your heart and in your head. Yeah. Um, and the person often cases just listens to yeah. what's going on. Um, and then sometimes that barber begins to share um, mm -hmm. what's, you know, how he can give some analytical advice. Yeah. Also, <laughs> also happening, the, right? the, the patron or the uh -huh. guy in the chair is now vulnerable. Uh -huh. Very, very vulnerable because think of your, your, your mm -hmm. position of getting your hair cut mm -hmm. or grooming. Mm -hmm. That's very personal. Mm -hmm. And so like, so open. I, I love it. So you identify, you acknowledge, and that vulnerability, transparency mm -hmm. begins to open up. And I think that with men, you know, part of the process is just the aspect of being able to be open enough to then receive sometimes 
from someone, from an individual, from a father, mm -hmm. who can begin to pour into that place that's uh, there where there's the wound. Mm -hmm. And I think that that space of just uh, being able to just share their ideation around, hey man, healing is available. Yeah. Hey man, there's some support available in that space. Yeah. And being present where you feel like you've had a lack of presence mm -hmm. is a huge part of the healing road. Now, it all doesn't work out all like that in a, in a sense. Right. But if we're talking about just a step-by-step -step process, identifying, becoming able to acknowledge how you've been feeling over the course of time, and then opening up the area of where there is vulnerability and uh, transparency opens up the idea that you can then begin to receive from hopefully someone who's a trade professional or a pastor. Sure, um, sure. Or a mentor who can begin <laughs> or a barber. To, mm -hmm, <laughs> who can begin to pour into that space. Absolutely. And begin to provide some some support, some solidarity, and some hopefully biblical wisdom Man. in a place of, of support for that. This is very relevant and timely yeah. um, because of the statistical um, data that talks about you know the impact of fatherlessness among mm -hmm. african-american males in particular which we can relate to but we have sons mm -hmm. we are sons mm -hmm. we have been sons and now we're fathers mm -hmm. and some of us have moved to grandfather <laughs> status um blessings. which is a blessing upon blessing <laughs> upon bless keep them coming but one, one of my daughters said um how many grandkids you want i said how many y'all got just keep them coming <laughs> and that's honor that it, children are the heritage of the lord and the fruit of the womb is his reward that's and that's course, according yeah. to the scripture mm -hmm. but back to david and absalom and mm -hmm. ammon um absalom's in you know how did he end okay he reconciled with david mm -hmm. for that time for that time but we find that the story turns again mm -hmm. in some kind of way how did absalom end up well you know talk about that beautiful hair and that beautiful nature right on the run um, because of the crowning of his own self as king, he ends up in the nature of the woods. And of course, you hear this, if you don't know the story, he's running away on a chariot, I believe, right? Mm -hmm. And in this space, his hair, the thing he was called beautiful for, ends up getting tangled up. Literally, right? his pride. What that means is that yeah. pride get tangled up. And of course, what does the Bible say? Pride comes before a... Destruction uh, and a haughty spirit before uh -huh, fall. <laughs> uh -huh. And so that's what ends up happening to him. Yeah. Of course, David is an utter um, chaos in his heart. Again. Yeah, well, every time he loses a son, I mean, he lost every many sons. Time. You know? Every single time. And so, in that space, you can imagine if we bring that to the here and now, you know, in context, how many times do fathers and sons go through these ups and downs in mm -hmm. relationship and how you need the bridge of, of the King of Kings to begin to mend divides where you feel like sure. the enemy could cause destruction in many cases. Interesting thing is you that know? God literally uses the story of David to express his dynamic with us, mm -hmm. David being the example of fallen man, mm -hmm. restored man, mm -hmm. chosen man, <laughs> uh, elevated man, mm -hmm. man that have made a base because from his very first child who he lost, um, you know, based on the mm -hmm. dynamic and the situation mm -hmm. that was going on. Yeah. yeah, it was, it was, it was clear, very, very clear that God is communicating to us about fathers and about sons. Mm -hmm. um, I want you to recap that dynamic because Absalom goes, kills one of his brothers because of his sister. He separates from his father. He gets to restore with his father, but then deep in his heart was to replace his father. Mm. And, you know, his idea of restoration was to replace. <laughs> David's idea of restoration was to rekindle the love and the bond between the two of them. And that's what God desires of us. He really wants us mm. to come in connection with him and not replace him with something else, with a love or desire for promotion, with so a good. love or desire for an elevated seat. Because Absalom crowned himself as king because he heard the people talk about how fine he was and how, how, how um, militant he was. He was a warrior. He mm -hmm. fought. Mm -hmm. But that hair got in the way, which represented his pride. pride. You know, recap this as we wrap this up and we're going to pray out. But I'm, I'm grateful that you've chosen Absalom because many people don't read um, deep into the story mm -hmm. and get the background. Uh, mm -hmm. Absalom was one of David's sons. Um, we find that Solomon ends up with the kingdom, of mm -hmm. course, and we know that he was the wisest of them all, mm -hmm. but he also ends, you know, his story doesn't end as, right. as, as sharp and bright as we would like yeah. to think because he kind of strikes everything off as being vanity, even though God had uh, a covenant and a promise with him of, yeah. of bestowing him with wisdom that gave him accomplishments that amazed the world. Mm. There was no kingdom like the yeah, kingdom like of the king Solomon. Solomon. Exactly. Yeah. So yeah, recap Absalom's yeah. story and... You know, and tell us, you know, how, what we can do to avoid <laughs> yeah. being like Absalom. Yeah. No. no, I just think in that idea, uh, again, with Absalom and uh, the, the journey that he goes through from 
you know, sonhood to, again, just this idea that he replaces, you know, wants to replace David. In that space in his life, he's challenged with this continual aspect, epidemic of what do I do in a relationship with my father? Do I use those access? Mm. Uh, do I use the privilege that I have as a son? You know, do I navigate the space of the challenge of, you know, what I want to become versus what he may desire for me to become? I love that you brought up Solomon because Solomon models David, mm -hmm. which maybe even is why he comes and becomes the greatest king. He mm -hmm. comes after a great king and he models the character of David in a lot of good and bad ways. Sure, sure. Um, <laughs> the wife's the wife thing, <laughs> that, that womanizing situation, right. they just couldn't get out of their bloodline, right. literally. Right. Um, but in that space, I think the thing I want to draw out is um, you see a lot of emotion in the experience of Absalom and David in the space that their heart is challenged, in the spaces that um, they have this distance and then they do come to restore for a season. And in that restoration, again, I love what the woman does that brings the analogy to David. She says, God wants restoration between sons and fathers. Sometimes it's not just you can come to the cookout, you can come to the barbecue, mm -hmm. but I really don't want to interact with you. Mm -hmm. It has to be and should be and could be a place of restoration mm -hmm. for fathers and for sons to come into a place to know that God wants restoration between their hearts, between their minds. He wants them to be in, to conjoin face to face. And in that place of face to face uh, relationship, you know, we I believe we believe <laughs> Grace, mm -hmm. um, that God can do that. And so I would just say if if you're a father who is estranged from a son. If you are a son that's estranged from a father, yes, there's probably some things that you have challenges is. Yes, there's probably some things that you have in terms of difficulties, some past hurts, some past pains. Um, but maybe this is the season where God not only wants you to begin to be restored to that person, and that doesn't always mean acceptance. Correct. Uh, but restoration can mean let's work through this in a space where we can at least fellowship together in some way, shape, or form. Um, that might be also something that's going on with your relationship with God. Amen. And, and God wants that restoration in that place in your heart as a son, as his son, um, in that place of a father, because at the end of the day, he's your father. Mm -hmm. And so in that space, I really believe that this is an opportunity. It's a season that we celebrate fathers. Why not celebrate your father in heaven by joining back up with him because he loves you? Wow. I want you to pray that prayer. I think about the scripture that tells us that now we are the sons of God, but it does not yet appear what we shall be. Mm -hmm. But we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him, mm -hmm. for we shall see him as he is. Mm -hmm. And that's God's invitation to us to be sons, mm -hmm. to be those who will yield themselves despite the breach, despite the disconnect, to say, hey, I want to avail myself to be reunited, reconnected with the father. Mm -hmm. And that's the natural father or the spiritual father. Mm -hmm. There's got to be a lot of forgiveness. <laughs> There's got to be a lot of, of um, healing, yes, but sir. it can only start when we start. Mm -hmm. You know, we think about the world beginning when God said, let there be light and there was light. The world was already conceived in the mind of God mm -hmm. and in the heart of God, but it wasn't until he needed a place to put man, his son. That's right. It, it wasn't until he needed a place for humanity to be mm -hmm. that that came into existence. God needs us to be someplace mm -hmm. that we're not as men. It's kingdom men. That's right. God needs us to be in a place that he's created and we can't get there if we're living in the disruptive state of fallen man mm -hmm. as opposed to restored man. That's right. So if you can pray us out, yes, um, again, I want to invite everybody to come out on, well, today, um, you can come at one o'clock and worship with us. This whole month we're talking about men and men in the word, but on next Sunday, which will be Father's Day, we want you to be in the house um, you don't have to wear a black suit, brothers, but if you've got a black suit, wear your black suit because we'd like to do a blackout. We want to we wanna make it known that there are men coming back to the house of God. COVID taught us a whole lot, and we haven't had a whole lot of church since then. At mm -hmm. least we haven't. And we're not going back to some of the things we used to do, but we absolutely want to make a statement um, both naturally and spiritually by showing up and being present. Absalom mm -hmm. showed up in order to get right. reconciliation with his dad. That's right. Closing words and prayer, man. Yes, sir. Well, I just want to pray and just let's just let's pray for the men. Every man that's out there, um, again, you heard the story and you've heard us share a little bit about that emotional connection. Let me pray for you. Uh, Father, we just thank you for every single man who first has yet to be restored to you. Yes. You know their heart, you know their mind, you know they're waking up and they're going down, Father. And so in that space, I just ask you, Lord God, to 
begin to touch the heart of that man, begin to wake his mind up with the wonderful things that you have planned for him. But in that space, Lord God, allow him to also uh, sojourn to you, so come and gather to you, knowing that you are the very essence and very aspect of what he needs for that restoration. Let him come running after you. In fact, let him ask to have a clean heart, even as the King David asked, Lord God. He said, create me a clean heart. Lord God, renew a right and steadfast spirit for me. So God, I thank you you for righteousness to arise in every single man. I thank you for cleanliness in their heart and in their mind, the conceptualization of their thoughts to begin to awaken in their mind. Lord God, I thank you that transformation will occur for every man who desires to have a relationship with the Lord. And so God, I just thank you that you begin to draw that man unto you and that he'll come running to you, Lord God, with every aspect of his heart and his mind. I also pray, Lord God, for every father Every father who has poured and mentored and hasn't always received the appreciation that he desires or the honor that he needs. God, I thank you that this is a season of restoration of honor to every father, every man who has poured himself into a mentee or into a man. I thank you, Lord God, that he will be able to come, Lord God, and know that he is honored by being in your space, by being in your throne room. Where he might not receive the honor from a son, he gets it from you. And great is his reward in heaven, Father. And so, Lord, we just thank you that you are bringing restoration between those two individuals, a father and a son, Lord God. Bring it even as you did with Absalom and, and David. And Lord God, we thank you that you will seal it with your presence and seal it, Lord God, with your word. And let it be so and let it be said. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. Sam Jones, thank you so much. You could actually put a plug in for your counseling. Uh, sure, um, sure, sure. So and how people can contact you. <laughs> yeah. So um, again, we are uh, we um, the entity of the Wisdom Center counseling services are located at 5180 Kalamazoo Ave, Suite B, Kentwood, Michigan 49508, and you can contact us um, at our website, theprincipalthing.com, because wisdom is the, the principal, principal thing. thing. I love it. <laughs> Listen, thank you so much for being a part of this time with us here at Grace for the Nation Church, where we believe there is hope. Until next time, God bless. Thanks for tuning in to our online service. Maybe there was something that you heard today that really touched you or uh, moved your heart. It's always a good idea to seal that with prayer. Or maybe you've decided that it's time for you to give your life to the Lord. The Bible says in Romans chapter 10, verse nine, that if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and you believe in your heart that God raised Jesus from the dead, then you're saved. And that's it. It says that anybody that calls on the name of the Lord can be saved. So it doesn't matter who you are. It doesn't matter what you've done. It doesn't matter um, what you think about yourself. God said it and so we should believe it. So I wanna pray for you so that you have the opportunity to um, experience the love and joy and peace that comes with having Christ in your heart. Will you pray with me? Heavenly Father, I thank you that you have given us all the opportunity to um, accept you into our hearts and that you have made um, us free from our past, things that we've done that we're not proud of. Lord God, I thank you that we're able to um, confess with our mouths and to uh, believe in our hearts and and you will accept us into your family. So God, I pray that uh, for that person out there who is interested in um, growing in their faith, Lord, I pray that they will repeat after me, Heavenly Father, um, I believe who you are. I believe that Jesus is Lord and I want him to enter into my heart. I believe of the sacrifice that was made on the cross on my behalf. And Lord, I just ask that you forgive me of my sins and that you welcome me into your family. Lord God, we love you, we honor you, and we thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. 
And that concludes our live streaming service here at Grace for the Nations Church, but it doesn't have to stop your connection with us. If you're interested in finding out more about Grace for the Nations Church, visit our website at www.gftnc.org. But we also invite you to come and visit us in person. We have service here every Sunday at one o'clock and you are sure to be blessed by the experience that takes place at Grace for the Nations Church. We're in Grand Rapids, Michigan, but we also serve a community worldwide. So stay tuned, tune in on all of our social media platforms and remember that at Grace, it's our endeavor to reach the diverse people of the world by teaching biblical principles and life application of scripture. Despite the present day challenges that face individuals, families, and our communities, we believe there is hope. Let me pray for you. Father, we thank you for our friends who've gathered with us electronically and on social media and our other platforms. We ask that you would touch, bless, and minister to them even as we go about our daily tasks in this world. We ask the grace of God to be upon them in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless.